Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a uh, long awaited, maybe, I don't know. I don't know if anyone's waiting on videos. I have not posted a video in the entire month of February, which is honestly really, really crazy. Um, just this semester has been a whirlwind. I always post less during the school semester, obviously, because I'm busy, but it is, oh, just turn on my flashlight. It is my first semester as a graduate student, second to last two, first and almost last. Um, but yeah, it's been a pretty busy time and so we have one more week until spring break. So we're already in week eight, halfway throughout the semester, which is literally insane. Um, so I just wanted to go ahead and do a January and a February wrap up, um, because I didn't do either of those. It is March 3rd right now. So we'll also hopefully do a March TBR. That is the goal. Um, I might honestly just film it like right now. So if you see me in like the same exact attire, that might be why. I'm not exactly sure yet. We'll see. Um, but Anyways, yeah, so we're just going to go through all the books I have read in January and February. I actually technically beat my reading goal because I set my reading goal as 24 because last year I it was at 100 and I just felt like it wasn't the best for me like reading wise. Like I did, I did beat it, but it, it was like reading was not fun for some of those books. Like maybe, maybe like um, 15 of those books weren't very fun and so that's like not that many books when you read 111 but it adds up so anyways I beat it and then I changed it at first I thought I couldn't change it but then I talked to Grace and I looked back at it and you can change it so now it's 50 and I'm 30 out of 50 I have 30 books read out of the 50 um January was honestly just a crazy month I that's not normal um so Anyways, we're just gonna get started. This book I read in January was Sable Peak, which this was the sixth book in the Eden series. I was really excited for this one. I ended up reading it four stars. Um, this one was about Theo, I'm pretty sure. Theo and, or Mateo. <laughs> Mateo and Vera. It was, it was so good. I love this series. It's a very feel-good series, small town vibes. If you like the Eatons, the Chestnut Spring series, you will definitely like this one. But yeah, it was a great start to the new year. Then I read Before the Coffee Gets Cold and I rated it four stars. Um, I really like the style. Obviously, this is translated. I feel like it's one of the most famous translated books and I really enjoyed it. I think the storyline is really, really um, special. I feel like one of the I think it was four stories that we get. One of them I wasn't like 100% like, oh, do I really care? Um, but it was still good. It's a very interesting concept and it did make me think about time a lot. I really got into a memoir kick, specifically audiobook memoirs. So I read Down the Drain by Julia Fox. I ended up reading this five stars. Honestly, it was so good and I became obsessed with Julia Fox after reading this. And yeah, honestly, if you're just looking for something super interesting that reads like fiction, read Down the Drain. It was so good. I read Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. Ended up reading this four stars. It was so cute. This is the first Allie Hazelwood book that I've read that was a non-STEM related novel. And she really killed it personally, in my opinion. I know a lot of people had their own personal qualms with this, which I think is 100% valid. I see where they're coming from. Um, but it was really, really sweet. I love that the guy was so obsessed with her. Although it did make me a little frustrated that she just didn't get it. Um, and that's why it's a four star. Barbarian's Touch. This is the seventh book in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. If you know, you know I read all the books that come out, unfortunately. I don't know. There's something about them that I just fear that I have to read them. And I actually enjoy them. I rated it three stars. Um, I feel kind of sad because I actually had some of these books um, physically, but I usually take the books I have physically read back to my hometown. That way they're not taking up book space. So all of these books on my shelf are actually unread books, which is one of my goals to hopefully finish reading this by the end of the year. We'll see if that happens. But anyways, I read Daisy Hates, ended up rating this five stars. I cannot tell if I'm a Daisy Hates person or a Magnolia Parks person. Genuinely, it is one of the hardest things I've had to like ponder over because I also, spoiler alert, I'll just go into it. I read Magnolia Parks A Long Way Home, which is the third book in the universe, but 
the um, second book of Magnolia Parks and it actually like destroyed me and I think I'm a Daisy Hates person but Magnolia Parks is like it's also so close but I think I am in I maybe I'm in Magnolia Parks I really I don't know but both of those five stars we went a little out of order there but who cares I listened to Love Pamela by Pamela Anderson I ended up reading this four stars um I think it was actually about a 3.75 and I said in my review that I think after reading Down the Drain just any celebrity memoir is just like can't compare but then I was actually proven wrong when I listened to Finding Me by Violet Davis now this was like a six plus stars I honestly think this is the best memoir I've ever read like, if you take anything out of this video, read Finding Me by Viola Davis. She is an incredible woman, and I personally think listening to it made it 100 times better because you could hear her, hear her emotions. Um, obviously, like, she gets to decide, she wrote it, but she also gets to decide how it's read. And so I just found it super, super impactful, 100% recommend it. Then I read Counting the Cost by Jill Duggar. If you guys can see like a theme, I was really into the memoirs for some reason and it does not stop there. Um, I ended up rating Educated five stars. I feel like it's an absolute must read. I feel like it's really important for students specifically to read and usually, typically everyone experiences being a student to some capacity. And so I think this is perfect for um, obviously people who are mature enough for the content but it's just so interesting my friend Ruth it is like one of her favorite um books ever and I completely support that it was our common book my freshman year so a few years ago um but yeah so good then I read The Woman in Me by Britney Spears I ended up reading this four stars I thought it was pretty good but it wasn't like it compared to all the other memoirs I was reading it didn't provide me with anything like super substantial I do really like it's just so sad the things that Brittany had to go through and I'm I feel like really happy for her that she's like she came out with this memoir and memoir I'm, I'm starting to say memoir weirdly so I apologize it's coming out of my mouth so frequently um, I don't know what I was saying but it was pretty good like I said four stars Honestly, rating memoirs can be a little weird because it's like you're almost judging them on their life, but it's not. You're also judging them on how they tell the story, which I think is a fair criticism. Um, so anyways, four stars. Um, then I read Becoming Free Indeed, My Story of Disentangling Faith from Fear, and this is Ginger Duggar. So after I read Jill Duggar's um, memoir, which was amazing, I wanted to read this one because it was available. And so I listened to it and I'm pretty sure it was read by the author. I rated it three stars and I said in my review that I was expecting more of a layout of her life and um, it was more of an explanation of her religion, which nothing's wrong with that. It's just not what I was expecting. But if you literally read like the title and the description, what I got out of it is whatever is exactly what she's marketing. So that was all on me. But three stars is not a bad rating and I would also like recommend it for sure. I read The Way I Am Now, which is just recently came out, I think, or maybe a few months ago, but this is a sequel to The Way I Used to Be. Now, I read that book twice. I'm pretty sure I read it in high school, and then I read it last year. I'm pretty sure it's a pretty good novel. It um, recounts experiences with sexual assault, so just a warning on that, um, and abuse of some sort, alcohol abuse, physical abuse. And... I think I rated that one either four or five stars. It's not my favorite um, story or recount of like a sexual assault victim. I believe that is Speak, which I can't remember who that's by. Um, but it's very good and it kind of got a resurgence on TikTok, I think. And so Amber Smith came out with The Way I Am Now, which I believe is... A few years in the future I can't remember if it picks up where the last book ended so like four years after her assault I think that may be right but it was good I rated it four stars I will say there was I saw one review after I read it um, and this was a while ago so I, I am not remembering it 100% but someone said like I thought this was supposed to be about her growth and it kind of seems like she's stuck at the same point which as someone as a survivor that makes complete sense but I think it was kind of marketed that it would be like 
a little bit more of a transformation and people didn't see that and I can I can definitely see where they're coming from but I still enjoyed it and I thought it was good and it was good to see her have a happy ending um as happy as it was I guess read the Edens a legacy short story so I had read this entire series and then I find out there's two novellas so I read both of them I rated both of them four stars I'm pretty sure it's a quick steamy not um a quick steamy um novella and I'm pretty sure it interacts with the second or the third book in the actual series so love that and then I also read Christmas and Quincy which is um or no sorry a legacy short story is number 4.5 so it's in between the fourth and fifth book and then Christmas is in Quincy is um 0.5 so it is about the parents the 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 patriarch and the matriarch of the Edens and it was a four star book too I was very quick very steamy I loved it love seeing those characters in a different setting um definitely so good we're at Starling House and I rated it three and a half stars this was actually a book club um pick with my friends Ashley and Major. We actually have not discussed this I'm realizing now as I'm feel filming this um, but it was genuinely unlike anything I've ever read. I loved the house as a character. Honestly think the house was my favorite character. Um, yeah it was pretty good. I think some things were just like whoa wait what's happening and honestly I think that was on me for not being able to keep up but also I was like no actually like what's happening right now. Um, but it was good. Three stars, three and a half stars is pretty good. I would definitely recommend it. Or I would recommend it to someone. Okay, then I read Love Redesign by Lauren Asher. This is the first book in her new series, The Link Lakefront Billionaires. Um, I think I rated it four star, four and a half stars. Yeah, I rated it four and a half stars, which I feel like is pretty good for a little, like, cheeky romance. So definitely recommend that. I really loved the characters read room this was part of like i need to read my physical tbr i ended up rating that one four four and a half stars it was heart-wrenching i did not know that the narr narration was going to be told from the five-year-old i definitely thought that was something unique at least in my opinion and i've seen the movie um but reading the book was definitely a different experience now we have some physical books that i actually have just like four of them um First one being House of Flame and Shadow. I rated this actually four stars. I initially had it as a five stars, but I think I only had it as a five stars, almost as like, I feel like I need to rate this a five stars. It was very good. I loved certain scenes, um, but some narr narrations or perspectives were not my personal favorites. Um, and the ending to me, there was like something, okay, my camera battery died, so if you're in a new angle, sorry, but I believe I was talking about House of Flame and Shadow, I feel like something about the ending, just like ending in a, like, happy ending bow twist, something was off about it, but I still love, I still love the series, it's my second favorite from the actual series, so it's not like my all-time favorite from there, but it's fine. I read a school book actually and that was what we see when we read by peter mendelson i rated it three stars had some interesting insights but it wasn't like my like i'm not like sipping that tea you know that was weird um anyways um then i read lunch poems which major is currently borrowing she actually got this for me from the raven it's so good frank o'hara i genuinely believe is my favorite poet i also really well I really like Emily Dickinson and Walt Whitman, but I just feel like they are kind of a different genre, I guess. I, I think Frank, I think Frank O'Hara is my favorite poet, like if I absolutely had to choose. I'm scared to say that, but Lunch Poems was so good. I rated it five stars. I found my all-time favorite poem in there, or at least my all-time favorite Frank, Sin uh, Frank Sinatra, what? I think I found my all-time favorite frank o'hara poem in this little collection so i'm excited to have that back on my shelf but um ashley read it and now major's reading it so excited about that one read you by caroline um Kepnes or keps kemps kemps maybe um yeah i got this so long ago and it was when the show had come out um but i was like i want to read it i want to see like what what influenced this show that we all are obsessed with and it was honestly really really good it actually like 
I kind of had like a bad dream after reading this or a few bad dreams. I, ended, I only rated it three stars, so it's an average book. But the way that this kind of like, like I, hopefully I'm not in the minority here, but honestly it kind of makes you sympathize for Joe, which I feel like the show also does, which is like, it's a mind boggling experience to obviously know what he's doing is bad, but also like kind of understand like but like not really like ultimately it's like no like this guy is actually severely effed up but also on the one hand i'm like joe what are you doing anyways three stars if you like thrillers i would read it but it wasn't anything to like write home about pick this up okay then i read a theory of adaptation this is for one of my classes i read it three stars usually school books are a solid three stars so yeah read this bad boy i actually at a little library read a really quick short story i wish i had kept the book but obviously it's a little library and i wanted more people to read it so i grabbed it read it and then put it right back and that was the deal of a lifetime by frederick bachman rated this four stars this is the second short story i've read by this author and honestly he I love him. I have one of his books on my shelf and I think that it moved up my TBR list definitely after reading this. It just, it really, it really has you thinking. At least the two stories I've read have made me think and so I think he does a very very good job at that. Okay guys, we only have three books left. Golden couple. So I was actually kind of accomplishing my goal by trying to get books off my shelf so I am proud of me. For that it's not the best but anyways yeah this is the golden couple it is a thriller i um actually really enjoyed it i rated it three stars which pretty average rating again but i feel like i was actually shocked at the ending of how it concluded um which maybe i mean reading the reviews like people guessed it but i could like see a tie but i was shocked so i enjoyed it three stars good okay Two more books. The first was Bride by Allie Hazelwood. Oh my gosh, five stars. I read this in one sitting. So, so good. It actually reminded me of when I was 10 years old. I'm pretty sure I was 10 years old when I read Twilight for the first time. And just the feeling of excitement, like this is something new. Like, oh, it just hit me so good. Um, definitely recommend it. Obviously it's different than her sim related. Um, novels and then also her ch chess novel but honestly it was amazing like it i don't know if i already said this but i picked it up and i could not put it down until i read the last page so that's a good book it's kind of fitting because the last book i read was new moon um which is the second book in the twilight saga so i'm actually writing about this for um one of my assignments in my adaptation <laughs> class actually so rated this five stars love the series um, love this book. Honestly, it does make me sympathize. I have always been Team Edward. Team Edward till I die. Like, for real, Team Edward, you are mine. Robert Pattinson, call me. Um, I know you watch. Um, but anyways, yeah. Um, read it, loved it, made me sympathize with Jacob, and then, and then it made me go back to Edward. So pretty chill I'm gonna read I'm gonna read Twilight next because I had to start with New Moon because for the assignment but we will be reading Twilight don't you worry um but anyways yeah I think those are all the books I read in February and January I don't know why I went backwards there I will probably film my March TBR soon um I want to get that out not the next video after you guys are seeing this but hopefully the one following that um yeah, I hope this gets up soon. Hoping it's getting up the first week of March. Um, apart from like the third, the third through the ver the first through the third, whatever. What am I saying? I don't know. I need to go. I'm tired. I'm not used to vlogging anymore. But we're getting, we're going back. I have some footage that I have been taking this month. Um, I just need to put it together. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you guys read. Let me know if you read any of these same books. No one ever comments when I say that, so don't do that, actually. I'm going to pretend I didn't tell you to do that. That way I don't get sad when nobody does it. Um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys very soon. Um, peace and love. Bye, guys.